Hi gang! I recently showed Izzy, my two-eyed robot, at an Arts and Maker Fair, and to do that I had to modify it to be more compact and sit higher up. And Izzy also showed a problem that I expected, where both eyes would be looking at a person, but they'd be looking at different people. So after the fair I made some improvements with how the eyes pick what to look at. If you're interested in those improvements, skip to the second part of this video. Firstly, here are the modifications I made to make Izzy more compact. The first step is to get the electronics for controlling the eye's servo motors into the head. I start by switching from using this large breadboard to this much smaller one that would fit inside the head. That's easy enough to do. I then need a way to mount the Arduino Mega 2560 in the head. Luckily I have this case that the Arduino sits in. And I break a hole in the base of the case. The head has a support piece with a hole in it here. Using a nylon bolt, I bolt the case to it. The Arduino then snaps in place. Next is to find a way to mount the breadboard somewhere in the back of the head. So for that, I start up Blender, the 3D modeling software that I use for designing 3D printed parts. I draw up this support piece, to which I can either tape or bolt on the breadboard. After 3D printing it in my old reliable Creality CR10 3D printer, here's the resulting part. I use it to mount the breadboard inside the back of the head. And here's the electronics all in the head. It even still works. The next step is to somehow attach the head to the top of this structure. This structure contains the NVIDIA Jetson TX1 board and is surrounded by adapters, a USB hub, and a power bar. I again use Blender to design this support and 3D print it. I screw it to the top of the structure. Then I lower the head into the built-in slot. It's a little wobbly but fits snugly. I bolt it in place anyway. It's not only a little wobbly, but it also sags down in the middle. I'd made the 3D print a little too thin in order to keep the print time down. So I get out some balsa wood, and with a little cutting, I glue together two side pieces using the plastic support as a guide. Then for the end pieces, I measure out and cut pieces which I glue on. After doing some sanding on the ends, it's a tight fit, so I don't need to screw it in place. I screw the plastic support to the frame, and then drill holes so that I can screw it to the balsa support. I then screw it on. After putting the head in place, the sagging and most of the wobble are gone. The wobble that's left is because the head is a single narrow structure. Some testing shows it still works. Notice how Izzy sometimes looks at the cell phone, and sometimes at the person, me. It's picking the object that it sees in both eyes, and that has the highest combined probability of being right. Now for the improvements in choosing an object for both eyes to look at. The way Izzy works is that each camera captures its own image. They then both do object recognition on their respective image. The object recognizer, an open source one called Darknet, returns what it found and the probability that it was right. Sort of how confident it was. One change I made was that previously the object recognizer would write only the name of the object on the image. One of my recent improvements was to also make it write the probability, or how confident it is that it's right. Previously I would look for an object that both eyes saw. For example, plastic bottles. Then I'd simply have the eye choose the object with the highest probability and move to center on that object. But the objects with the highest probability wasn't always the same object, as in this case where one eye is looking at the Sprite bottle with a green label with a probability of 84%, and the other is looking at a small reddish apple juice bottle with a probability of 88.9%. So I needed more tricks for selecting the same actual object. I decided to use color and size. One of my fellow makers from our local Hack613 maker group suggested comparing rectangular blocks of color within the objects that the recognizer finds. Each dot in the image is called a pixel. Each pixel is made up of three values, a value of 0 to 255 representing the intensity of the red in the pixel, a value of 0 to 255 for the intensity of the green, and a value for the blue's intensity. To give some examples, a very red pixel would have a high red value, but very low green and blue values. Similarly, a very blue pixel would have very low red and green values, but a high blue value. The yellow pixel would have high red and green, but middling blue. And the gray pixel would have similar values for all three colors. What I settled on is adding up all the red values, green values, and blue values for all the pixels in a rectangular area within each object. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it for the whole object, because the object recognizer gives a box surrounding the object, but the actual object is within that box. A lot of what's in the inner edges of the box has nothing to do with the object. So by adding the color values for a smaller rectangle within the given box, I ignore things that have nothing to do with the actual object. 
My first attempt was to use a box that's in the middle that's 50% of the width and height. But I did want the color values for some of the background, in case it helped differentiate the objects. I instead settle on a box that's 95% of the width and height. That's what the rectangle drawn here is showing. For differentiating the objects by size, if the two boxes that the object recognizer gives me are different in size by 50%, then I decide they're different objects. Even for the same object, it sometimes gives different size boxes. Sometimes, however, the object is only partly visible in one eye, and so the box is much smaller. And in that case, I reject that pair of objects. With all that information, my code currently decides using this algorithm. I go into a loop comparing all combinations of objects that both eyes see, for example, bottles. If they're both entirely visible, then I compare their sizes. If one is bigger than the other by more than 50%, then I stop there. They're not the same object. Otherwise, I look for the best color match. For that, the object recognizer must be at least 60% confident that it recognizes the object in each eye and their combined probability must be higher than any other pair of the same object, and the total numbers for their red, green, and blue pixels must be within one percentage point of each other. I call that a color match. So for the final decision, the pair of objects must be close enough in size and have the best color match. I move the eyes to fixate or center on that object. Here's some of what the eyes fixated on, testing with bottles. It does great where the objects are all bottles, but they're different sizes and contain different amounts of red, green, and blue pixels. Sometimes the eyes are looking at different objects because one eye recognizes only one bottle, and it's the wrong one. It's a big improvement, but more tricks can be done. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel for more videos with tips for making stuff. If you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or comment below. Keep on watching!